I'm going to tie two things together here. Like, I remember I read something a long time ago where Jefferson said that to have one generation basically in debt another generation was an abomination. Yet in the Latin America, we have dictators installed by the U.S. signing agreements or putting in place policies that allow, you know, signing agreements for loans and things that in debt the nation for, you know, years and years and years and years to come. And, and you see, like, there's an entire continent, basically, South America was, was basically under this boot of, of debt peonage to the United States. Can you, can you kind of talk about, like, um, how they get trapped in it and why it's such a big deal and what the sweetheart deals that the corporations get out of it actually, you know, what they actually are? Yeah, uh, and, and I go into a lot of detail in the new Confessions of an Economic Hit Man, Nick, um, but one example, let's go back to Ecuador. So Ecuador is ruled by this military junta, junta. and I go down there in the 70s as an economic hit man, and, and other people do too, and, and convince this junta to take out huge loans from the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, build big electrical systems, hydroelectric projects that, that, that destroyed some rivers, destroyed some indigenous lands, and so on, but uh, provide electricity to the big industries there. Uh, and we knew that the military dictators were going to make huge amounts of money off these projects because they had brothers or friends that owned subcontractors, pipe layers, and people like that, that we would pay top dollar to our construction companies. We'd pay top dollar. They wouldn't ask for discounts. They'd pay top dollar. Uh, people, members of their families who had John Deere franchises or Coca-Cola franchises, and we'd buy a lot of Coke and pay prime pop price. And we also offered scholarships to their children, uh, we'd, we'd set them up to go to college in the United States, give them huge scholarships. So there were all these kind of legal bribes that went on with the military junta. They took out these huge loans. Now, about eight years ago, the democratically elected president of, of Ecuador, uh, uh, Rafael Correa, took office. Correa has a PhD in economics from the University of Illinois. He understands the system. One of the first things he did was to renegotiate the oil contracts to make them more favorable to his country. Second, one of, the, one of the other first things he did was to appoint a commission to look at debt, the very debt that I had helped impose. The commission decided that $3.7 billion worth of foreign debt was not owed by the people of Ecuador because it had been taken on by these military dictators. And they'd, they'd gained from it, but the people of Ecuador hadn't gained very much. And so Correa refused to pay the money. Um, and as a result, he was downgraded by Moody's, the, the World Bank, the IMF came after him. China gave him a billion dollar bridge loan, made it easy for him to start repaying it. His credit rating went back up. And now he's taken a hell of a lot of credit from, the, from China. Uh, and, and I'll say that. And, and Correa, incidentally, you know, endorsed one of my books. He says, yeah, this economic hit man book, this is, that tells what's happened here. Uh, and and he's, he's done some things since then. He's been compromised to a large degree. That's, a, that's another whole story. But the fact of the matter is, this debt was taken on, that I was aware of in the 70s, by these military dictators who used it primarily for the, their own personal gain and the gain of their cronies. And the guy who stood up and refused to pay it later was sort of was dissed by our financial community. And now it's turned to China. And we're seeing this over and over. And I think that's a shame. Because I, you know, I, I hate to see China make these huge inroads, but on the other hand, so many of these leaders around the world now look very skeptically upon the United States and our foreign policy. And, and they'll say to me, yeah, China may end up doing the same thing, but they haven't. The United, okay. States, the United States and your banks, you've proven that you, will do, that you can do this and you will do it. 